Pause. He was my best friend in the entire world. I got him when I was only eight years old, so basically, I grew up with him. He'd accompany me everywhere. Each time I would go to the local store, he would be right there beside me. Each time I would study for some test, he would sit quietly next to my desk, keeping me company. He was the best. But one day, a week before Halloween, he disappeared. But sometime before the disappearance of Paws, a major change happened in the neighborhood. And by major change, I mean that a new family moved in. They occupied Adam's old house. The Adams were an old couple who died in their sleep, apparently. And because of that unfortunate incident, the house remained empty for some time. But this family didn't seem to care, or maybe the realtor didn't tell them. The weird thing was that they moved in the middle of the night. Everyone was asleep that night on the block, except me. Me and Paws were up. As soon as the moving van arrived in front of their house and the brakes squeaked as it stopped, Paws got up and went to the window to see what was happening. Normally, he wouldn't do that, no matter what he would hear. But that time, it seemed like he was really curious. Who's there, boy? I asked him while I paused the movie and joined him next to the window. The movers were carrying a few boxes inside the house, and before I knew it, they were gone. It seemed like the new family didn't have a lot of stuff. Shortly after that, they arrived. Me and Paws watched from behind the shades. He seemed nervous, quietly growling at them. What's wrong, Paws? I asked him before I petted the dog on the head. That seemed to calm him down. The new family had a black car. A man got out first. He had a mustache, a black hat, and a cane. Then, his presumable wife stepped out of the vehicle. She seemed to be looking around as if checking if someone saw them. She looked sick, had pale skin, and really skinny arms. After looking around, she reached onto the back seat and pulled out a cat a black cat, which she started to pet before going inside. See, Paws, maybe you can be friends with that weird cat, I said jokingly before going back to bed and unpausing my movie. But my dog kept staring out the window, even after the couple and their cat went inside the house. What are you still doing there? I asked. Come on into bed, I told him, and after a few seconds, that's what he did. The next day, as I woke up, I didn't see Paws next to me in bed. I got up and went downstairs. He wasn't there either. Hey, did you see Paws? I asked my dad, but he said he didn't. He thought he was in my room. Mom even put out a bowl of dog food in the kitchen, but he didn't touch it. Paws? Paws? I started to say this while I went outside the house looking for him. I was desperate. He never disappeared like that, and I was certain that something must have happened to him. Paws? Where are you? I yelled. Seeing that I can't find him, not even at the park, not even in the backyard, I decided to ask the neighbors. Hello, Mrs. Davies. Did you happen to see Paws today? I asked my next door neighbor, but to my disappointment, she didn't. I went further down the block and then back again on the other side, asking all the neighbors, but no one had a clue where my dog was. I was desperate. There was only one more house to go the house where the new family just moved in the night before. I knocked on the door, but no one answered. Come on, I said while knocking again, but this time the door opened. Yes? The woman greeted me with a frown on her face and her cat in her arms. Excuse me, have you seen my dog Paws? I asked her, showing her a picture of Paws. Why would I know where your dog is? Probably out and about, eating garbage and sniffing other dogs. Disgusting, the woman said while petting her cat. I noticed that her cat had a paw wrapped up, and it didn't have it the night before. What happened to your cat? I asked her. Wouldn't you like to know? The woman said before shutting the door in my face. I left her porch, disappointed, and went inside. A week passed and Halloween night came along. Still, without my best friend, I couldn't enjoy it. I wasn't in the mood to give out candy or go to any parties. I kept thinking about what happened to Paws and whether he was still alive. As I was looking out the window, I saw that everyone was outside enjoying themselves. Everyone, except that weird family who just moved in. Paws never ran away before they came and he never was so aggressive about anyone, I thought to myself. 
Maybe that woman has something to do with Paz's disappearance, I said. So right then and there, I wanted to investigate. I went outside, put on a costume, and went into their backyard. I was looking for any type of clues that would tie them to my missing dog. As I was walking on the grass, I caught a glimpse of something in the window. The woman was standing on the floor with some candles around her and it looked like she was talking, but no one was there with her. All of a sudden, she threw some sort of powder in the air and opened her eyes. I ducked down. What's wrong with these people? I thought to myself. As I got up, I heard, Hey, stop it right there! I froze, looking left and right. I saw that the husband was walking towards me with the help of his cane. I took my mask off. Hello, sir. I I'm your neighbor. I was looking for my dog, I said. Inside my house? What did you see exactly? He menacingly asked while raising his cane as if he was about to hit me. Come on, dear. He's just a kid. The voice of his wife could be heard. I turned around and there she was with the window open. I'm sure you'll find your dog really soon. I have a... Hunch, she said. I looked at both of them, but didn't say anything. There was something clearly wrong with their energy, so I just left. I got home, disappointed, and went to bed. I just wanted to sleep and forget about everything. But something woke me up at around 3 a.m. It was a noise coming from my window, but I was on the first floor. I got up to check it out, and when I did, I tripped on something and fell. What the hell? I said while getting up, holding my head with my hands. But what I saw made me forget about the pain. There he was, pause, right next to my bed as he would normally be. But this time, he wasn't breathing. Pause was dead, all stiff, and he had a strange red marking on his forehead. It looked like some sort of pentagram or something. The next thing I did was go to my neighbor's house at that hour. I banged on the door furiously until one of them answered me. How did you know I'll find my dog? Did you kill him? Did he hurt your cat and you killed him and then returned him to me? Huh? I yelled so loudly, half the block woke up. You better go back to your home before I call the police, young man, the man said, and he was right. There wasn't any evidence that pointed to them. I got home and on that Halloween night at 3.30 a.m., I was burying my dead dog in my backyard, tears falling on his corpse. This isn't over, I whispered while throwing dirt on paws. Everyone seemed to be in the mood for Halloween already. Halloween was in a week and it feels like it was already here. All houses were painted black with skulls and pumpkins lying around. And because it could get dangerous around this time of the year, Janet and I decided to return home, where we were used to avoid any of the dangerous parts of Halloween. We had been away from home for about two months, enjoying the cool vibes of the summer before our parents decided it was best we come home. You can never tell how the month could go. I don't know why we decided to leave very late, as the journey back to our hometown would take about seven hours by road. We both loved road trips, so it felt like the best option to go with, to enjoy the journey back home, and to make enough memories through pictures and videos. Although I am 17 years old, Janet, my cousin, is 22, and so my parents could trust that I was going to be fine in her care. Janet was more like a sister to me, the one sister I never had, because I had just one brother, and he was off in another country with his wife and child. He only called once in a while to check up on me, Janet has been that cute older sister who could not leave her younger sister alone for any reason. After about a four hours journey, we decided to rest at a motel. We were both tired and getting a good sleep was not a bad idea even if the motel did not seem well rated online. It was all we could get at the moment. After payment and the likes, we settled in our room, the bed big enough for the two of us. Normally, girls would always just about a lot of people, especially boys, and this night was not an exception. We had barely gotten any sleep when a knife flew into the room, shattering the window into pieces. The knife stood on the bed, the sharp edge almost on Janet's leg. I watched her in shock as the terror on her face increased. 
Without processing what had just happened, another knife flew into the room, hurting Janet this time. Her hands held the knife in such a way that it injured her, causing her hands to bleed in the process. We both ran into the toilet, catching our breaths and holding each other. The whole of Janet's weight rested on me because of her injury. I tried to tie clothes on her body, but it seemed as though she had a lot of blood already spilling out from her. The door to the hotel room opened with force. I could feel it almost break from the screws that held it. Laughter echoed around the room. Funny thing, the laugh didn't seem like that of those matured. It was tiny yet devilish in all of its nature, which scared Janet and I more. I'm sorry, we should have left earlier or even boarded a plane, Janet said. It's fine, you could have not known. We only need to find a way out of here. We can talk about other things after that. Being sorry is not the next option right now, I answered. Bella, I don't care what happens here. All I know is I love you. I really do. And I want you to be fine always, okay? Do not let anyone steal your shine, okay? She said. I always loved the way she called my name. It had a sweet ring to it. I could taste the feeling every time she called me. It was like a sweet flavor of strawberry and vanilla ice cream mixed together. If she was old enough to be my mother, the whole world would think she was my mom. I loved her just as much as she loves me. How is the hand? Do you need anything? I asked. Even if I do, now is not the right time for that. Like you said, let's focus on getting away from whoever is causing the nuance first, she said, holding onto her palm in pain. Before we knew what was happening, the toilet door was pulled open, and a force pulled us out, causing me to hit my head on the edge of the bed and losing consciousness for a few minutes. I looked around in search of Janet, but she was nowhere near me. The whole room was dark, and I could not see the other parts of the room. But red eyes stared back at me from different corners of the room. I heard a whimper from the left side of the room and immediately rushed to her. Janet was helpless on the floor. As I tried to help her, my hands touched a warm, thick liquid, causing me to bring it to my nose before realizing it was blood flowing right from her head. I screamed, hoping the red eyes that stared blankly at me would help, but they did not move an inch. A small pair of hands pulled me again, but with a large amount of force. I fell on my face again, hitting my head hard on the floor. The light flickered for a second, but I could not even get a glimpse of who the people that were causing all this. It seemed as though these people took Halloween too far. It didn't mean death, just scaring and catching fun. I lay down quietly, hoping I would hear anything from Janet, but there was nothing. Janet cannot be dead. Pack her, one of them who stood close to me said, pointing to Janet's body. I pushed him away from me, making him to fall on his back, but to my surprise, he got up again in a second. With the pain of her death, I yelled, You killed her! I will make you pay for it! Oh, before you make us pay, we would have packed your body as well. The one that I pushed earlier spoke before pointing a gun to my head. Oh, I love Halloween. This is when you can do things like this and not feel bad about it. It's amazing. <laughs> you are a psychopath. You killed Janet, I cried. Oh, such a baby. Another one who was at the other end of the room spoke. I surveyed the room, based on the level at which their red eyes were placed. They all seemed to have the same height, which seemed too low to refer to as an adult or crazy teenagers who were just bored or drunk. I tried to move again, hoping the one who stood near me would not notice, but no matter how much I tried, he pressed the gun harder to my head. With no hope left in me, I said my last prayers, thanking God for everything and all I have been so far. Just do it. Kill me and let me stop struggling. You will have blood on your hands anyway. <laughs> oh, you don't want to make us pay anymore? I thought you would be able to hold on to life longer than this. But since it is what you want, I'm glad to offer it to you. Psychopaths, I thought. The light suddenly came on and they all hissed. I look up to at least see their faces before death welcomed me.